Hi everyone, so this is the first thing I hope is a series of videos titled Draw, Paint and Animate. So in today's video I'm going to show you the key stages that I completed to create this 2D frame by frame animated sketch that you're seeing on the screen right now. So let's get started. So a little background information. I'm at present creating a range of short animations featuring this character, Stan, and the stories focus on the day-to-day -day struggles that Stan encounters whilst living in the city. Now let me begin telling you how this cartoon was made by breaking down the production of this animation into easy to understand categories. The first category is pre-production, and this is all about planning and designing the film. The second category is production, and is all about actually producing and building all the content that will become the final film. And the third and final category is post-production. And this is about putting all the assets together, polishing them and publishing the final film. So starting with pre-production, the first thing I needed to do was get an idea. It didn't have to be a fully thought out story, just some inspiration that I could play around with and develop further. Now the idea I had was inspired when trying to have lunch in the park and being confronted by gangs of London pigeons. They all cluster around you, hoping for a scrap of food. So with this in mind, I did a little research. I went to one of the many parks in London and got a general feeling of the layout. I took some photos of the park, of the benches, trees, and general scenery to use as reference purposes when creating the background art. I then began developing a story. Now, being a visual artist for a visual medium, I prefer to develop my stories through storyboards and animatics, rather than writing them down. So here is how the story developed over a number of revisions. First draft, Stan sits on a park bench eating a sandwich. The pigeon lands next to him. Stan looks at the bird. The pigeon wrestles with Stan for the sandwich. The pigeon steals the sandwich and Stan is left on screen, sandwichless and upset. So this was the first draft and it was empty. You know, there's no story here. It's just a number of actions. There's no story. So on that basis, I had to develop it further. So in the second draft, Stan is sitting on the bench eating a sandwich. A pigeon lands next to Stan. Stan looks at the hungry pigeon and this time gives it a piece of bread from his sandwich. Then a flock of pigeons maul Stan for the bread. And then when the flock of pigeons disappear, we see they have eaten Stan and left his skeleton. Now I felt this was an improvement. I mean, Stan's good deed of feeding the bird turns back on him when all the birds in the park attack him for the bread. It brings a sense of comedy to the scene. So I decided to try and build on this a little more. On the third draft, Stan is sitting on the bench, Pigeon lands on the bench, Stan looks at the Pigeon, and then we cut to a close-up of the Pigeon, and we get to see his hungry expression. Then we cut again to a close-up of Stan, who looks at the Pigeon, and then he looks at his sandwich as he ponders what to do. Then we cut to a close-up of the Pigeon again, in which we then see Stan's hand come into the scene, offering the bird a piece of bread. Finally, we cut back to a full shot, in which then we see the Pigeons fly onto screen and maul Stan. And when they fly away, they leave Stan's skeleton. The original pigeon then grabs the piece of bread from Stan's skeletal hand and flies away. And then finally Stan's skeleton collapses onto the bench. Now this is feeling better again. The close-up shots clearly show that there is a connection between Stan and the pigeon. Uh, the, my only concern with this scene was that we were technically killing Stan off. You know, he ends up as a skeleton. And I know it's a cartoon and we can kind of do whatever we want, but I didn't feel at the time that this extreme death ending suited the style of the Stan cartoons. So I decided to revisit the story one last time. And in the final draft, Stan is sitting on the bench, the pigeon lands on the bench, Stan looks at the pigeon, we cut to a close-up of the pigeon, see his hungry face. We cut to a close-up of Stan who looks at his sandwich and then looks at the bird. Then we cut to a close-up of the bird and we see Stan offering the bird a piece of bread. Then we cut back to a full shot and then we see many pigeons fly towards Stan and maul him. When they fly away, we see Stan dazed and confused. It is then that the pigeon grabs the original piece of bread from Stan's hand and flies away. Stan then collapses onto the bench. I was happy with this draft. It felt a lot better than the previous. So with the story complete, it was time to enter the second category of production, which is production. And the first stage of this was to create the animation. Now with the animation process, you can break this down into four stages. Stage one is thumbnailing the keyframes for the animated scene, mainly focusing on staging, gesture, and timing. I also loosely sketched in the backgrounds into this scene, as this allows me to make sure that the rough animated characters and the rough backgrounds work together before 
I begin producing the final background art. Now in stage two, I rough out the actual animation. I start by using simple shapes to represent the characters and prop, and then continue with each pass to add further and further detail, such as noses, eyes, clothes, hair. And in this stage, I am mainly focusing on timing, weight, motion, arcs, exaggeration, a bit of squash and stretch, and secondary action. One thing I must highlight, during this stage, I only create the keyframes, the passing poses, the anticipation, and the follow through drawing. I do not create in-betweens at this point. Now with a rough animation complete, stage three is to tie down the final drawings, which means I use the previously created rough drawings as a guide to create the final neat drawings. Once all the drawings have been tied down, I was then able to create the in-between drawings. And stage four is inking and painting the animated drawings. Now due to a stylistic choice, I, I use the tie down drawings as the final artwork just to reduce the amount of work needed to create one of these animations. So the next stage is to create the background art. I print off each background sketch, which was created when thumbnailing the animation. Then using transfer paper, I traced each image onto sketching paper and then use this as a guide to design the background art. Then using transfer paper again, I traced the final background designs onto watercolour paper. I then inked up each image and painted them using watercolour paints. I like to use traditional watercolour paints when creating backgrounds. I find they work well with ink drawings and the medium provides interesting textures. Finally, I then scan the final paintings back into the computer. So with the animation finished and background art complete, it was time to enter post-production. I composited all the assets together in After Effects, the character animation, the pigeon animation, the background art. I then made a little colour and tonal adjustments to some of the assets and added some blur effects to the backgrounds to give them a sense of depth. I also added a few visual effects to the scenes, such as additional flying pigeons and some falling feathers, which both appear when the pigeons attack Stan. I then edited the scenes together and adjusted the timings of some of the animations just to fine tune the scene. And then finally I exported the film, completed and ready to be shown to the world. And here is the final result. So that's it everybody, these were the key stages to creating the animation. And please note, this production pipeline does vary depending upon the type of project you are working on. The three categories, which are pre-production, production and post-production, will remain the same, but the stages and steps within these categories may differ slightly depending on the type of production. Now I do aim for my future videos in the Draw, Paint and Animate series to focus more closely on the specific stages of the production pipeline, so you will get a more informative insight into, let's say, how to create a storyboard or how to rough out an animation. But for now, I wish you all the best and see you soon. Happy animating everybody.